I just want you to know that you are in for a good time in this meeting. And while I'm rejoicing over you, as a pastor, I'm concerned about those who are not coming or those who are not here today because you need these teachings. What God told me, what transforms a person is the word of God in ears. Not just the miracle you see. The word of God you hear can create all the miracles you need. May the Lord bless us with this word more and more in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yesterday we were here. We had such an awesome time in God's presence. And I believe God has more for us today again. And I just want you to be open unto God as the word of God is coming to us very strongly. Very strongly. I feel I repeat what he said, but I think I will be wasting his time to repeat what he taught us yesterday. It's always good to take notes so that you can go home and re review it. I took note when I got home, I read back what I wrote so that it made more sense. Some are things I know before, but as I go through it again, I get fresh insight. Fresh insight. There's nobody that teaches here that I will not take note, I will not learn from the person. It's very important. You learn from everyone because we are not equally gifted. Praise God. Stand on your feet as we again want to appreciate God for our guest speaker. The Lord ministered to me to invite these speakers we have for this uh, fasting festival. We'll be doing it all alone, but now this time we are trusting God to minister to us. The man of God that is about to speak to us, he told us a lot of yesterday. He's married with children, and he's, he told you how he had an encounter with me. He even quoted the date, May 4th, 2004. Have you? That's about 20 years ago. Can you imagine? He's a very young man still. Removed 20 years from his age. And you know, <laughs> you ask yourself how old is that time? And that through that encounter, the Lord ministered to him very strongly and became committed to the things of God more than ever. And he told us he, he said a great job he's doing. The name of his ministry is Grace and Illumination Ministry International, right there in Rukuba Road. And I want to appreciate God. I've ministered with it for him in that place. I had a great, great time that moment I was there. It's going to be a blessing to us. His name is Apostle Austin Odaji Oko. Jam your heart together for Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. I didn't say clap for him, oh. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can do better for Jesus. Give Jesus a big, big hand. Hallelujah. Such an honor and a privilege to be here once again. Hallelujah. It is my prayer that somebody will live here blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. If that person is you, your amen will be a resounding one. I want to sincerely appreciate God for the gift of life. There can be no preacher without life. Hallelujah. Every physical activity you do is because you are still alive hallelujah so i thank god for the gift of life then i want to thank our father in the house hallelujah somebody help us celebrate the angel over this house praise the lord is that how you celebrate greatness without him we will not be here today give jesus a big hand for him help me celebrate our mommy his support system, hallelujah. We celebrate you, Ma. Help me celebrate the associate pastors in this house, hallelujah. And every worker, you are the engine room of the ministry. We love and honor you, hallelujah. Help me celebrate my wonderful wife and children. They are here with me too, hallelujah. And help me celebrate yourself. You are a great creature of God. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and thank God for giving you the privilege to be 
in a meeting such as this. Just appreciate him, give him all the glory, thank him for the gift of life. The Bible said in Psalm 65 and verse 4, he said, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causeth to appear before him. So every time you appear in the presence of God, the Bible call you a blessed person. So that you are here tonight is a blessing from God. Why don't you just appreciate him? Father, thank you for giving me the privilege to appear in your presence tonight. Is somebody appreciating him? For those that were here, thank him for yesterday. For those that are just coming today, give him all the glory. Is somebody just appreciating him? Even for what he said to do in your life tonight, just thank him. Somebody just love God tonight for bringing you to his presence. Every time you come to the presence of God, there is a present he has packaged for you. Thank him for what he has packaged for you in this meeting tonight. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Spirit of God, we thank you. Thank you for putting up this meeting together, Lord. Thank you for what you did in our midst yesterday. Thank you for that which you are set to do even today. Thank you in anticipation for tomorrow and all the remaining days of this meeting. We say, blessed be your name. Spirit of the living God, let your presence, let your anointing brood over this atmosphere tonight again. Let lives and destinies be transformed. And let your name alone be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, I'm just but a mortal vessel. I empty myself of myself. I ask that you take all of me and use for your glory in the lives of your people tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Daddy, I'm sincerely grateful for this awesome privilege. Just like I said yesterday, it is an encounter even for me, and it is a prophetic meeting for me. It is my prayer that someone under the influence of my voice, your life will not remain the same even after tonight's meeting in the name of Jesus. For your name is holy, holy Lord. For your name is holy, your name is holy. Holy. Your name is holy. holy. Your name is holy. Hey, Alabada, boy, shake it, Alabo, shut up, Alabada. Your name is holy. Your name is holy, Lord. Holy. Somebody just worship him. Holy, Lord. And for your name is holy, 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 let the wind of your glory cover let us. Your river flow. 
Rabaya Nabosha, let the truth of your kingdom reign. Let the weight of your glory shut up our toes, India. Yes, Lord. Let the weight of your glory fall. Hallelujah. I like you to understand that every time we come to his presence one of the things we encounter is the weight of his glory it is my prayer that tonight somebody will come under the influence of the weight of his glory if that person is you let me hear your resounding amen, amen. one minute just present your expectation to god in this meeting this is day two the Bible said in Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2, it said, After two days he will revive us. Let there be a revival in my spirit tonight, O oh Lord. A revival that will be steered up by your word. Shake a peketo, shake a parapo sadia. Kaparato, shake a pelebo sadia lada. Let my life, let my destiny. Not remain the same even after tonight's meeting. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. In a short time, we'll soon be rising up. But before we do that, just give Jesus a big hand and just have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of the spoken words. Yesterday, let me just run briefly what we looked at yesterday. We looked at the power that is in God's word. That every word has the potency to produce results. From Genesis chapter number 1, from verse 2 down to verse 26, we saw that everything that was created was a product of God's word. And then we looked at the fact that we were created in the image and in the likeness of God. So we also have the potential to speak words and make things happen. And then we define words as divine and creative. We define words as creative entities, divine navigators. That you can navigate your destiny by the words that you speak. And then we say words are enforcers of realities of either life or death. And then we began to look at how to engage the power that is in the world. We say, number one, you must be genuinely born again. Number two, you must be one that speak the word with faith. Number three, you must speak God's word. Very important speaking God's word because... The word of God has capacity. It is full of power according to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12. And i like you to understand that every time you speak the word of God into every situation, that the same capacity and power that God has is the same capacity and power that his word has. John chapter 1 and verse 1, he said, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and that word was God. That nothing that was made was ever made without the word. And he said, The word became flesh. And the word became flesh. When you read verse 4 of that scripture, it said the word became the light of men. And that light shined in darkness. And the darkness had no potency to comprehend the power that is in the light. So every time you speak the word of God, everything must bow to the power that is in that word. Because God and his, one, and his word are one. They are two inseparable entities. Hallelujah. Quickly before we rise up to pray tonight. We'll be looking at another way by which you can engage the word of God. Number three, number four way, sorry, by which you can engage the word. I gave us three yesterday quickly. The fourth way by which you can engage the word of God is by a partnership with a personality called the Holy Spirit. 
I like you to understand, my brothers and sisters, every time you hear the word power as regards the kingdom, there is an entity that has the jurisdiction and the administration of the power of God. Every time as a believer, you hear the word power, there is an entity or a personality that is responsible for the jurisdiction and the administration of God's power. That personality is called the Holy Spirit. When you go back to Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 2. After God saw that there was darkness and chaos upon the surface of the earth, he had to come into partnership with this personality called the Holy Spirit. The Bible said, and the Spirit of the Lord brooded upon the water. It was not just a brooding, it was a partnership. And until that partnership was in place, God never said anything. It was after the Holy Spirit came, brooded upon the surface of the deep and then God said let there be light so every word that God spoke was in partnership with the Holy Spirit so when we are talking about the power of spoken words one of the entities and the personality that makes your word to carry power is called the Holy Spirit hallelujah so if you speak in partnership with him, you are bound to return with testimony with your words producing results. Why? It's the power center of God. So what gives credence to your word every time you speak is to have a consciousness that as you speak, there is a personality that you are in partnership with that makes your word carry the efficacy and the power that produces results. Somebody shout a loud amen. Engaging the power of the word by a partnership with the holy spirit god had to partner with him to speak words so every time you see power it is talking about the holy spirit because i said he has the jurisdiction and the administration of god's power you know in the trinity there is hierarchy god the father has the place of love god the son has the place of grace and the holy spirit has the jurisdiction of partnership and koinonia and power that's why in acts chapter 1 and verse 8 the bible said and you shall receive power when the holy spirit is come upon you so that means as a believer that carries the holy spirit inside of you you must have the consciousness that every time you speak there is a powerful entity that backs up your word called the holy spirit hallelujah one of the things that gave efficacy to the words that jesus speak spoke was because of his partnership with the holy spirit when you read acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it said how god anointed jesus with the holy ghost and with power and he went about speaking words that were delivering people speaking words that were healing the sick speaking words that was producing miracles hallelujah when you read luke chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible said there was a certain day that jesus was ministering and while he was speaking without laying hands on anybody the bible said the power of god was present to heal and to deliver hallelujah so one of the things that makes our word carry power is an understanding that there is a entity that we should partner with when we speak called the holy spirit and the good thing is that every believer has the holy spirit inside of him in john chapter number 14 and verse 16 when jesus was leaving he told them that you may be sad that i'm going but there was an entity that partnered with me that made you to see the kind of results that i produce that entity is called the holy spirit he said i will not leave you comfortless in john 14 16 he said i am living behind a comforter and a partner he said he will abide with you not once in a while but forever hallelujah hallelujah and in verse 17 it made it very clear that as a child of god the holy spirit is not something you are waiting to receive he said he dwells inside of you so a lot of us we speak without having an understanding that there is a personality dwelling inside of us that has the capacity to empower our words to produce 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John 14, 16, let's just read it. Verse 16. It said, I will not leave you comfortless. I'm going to leave with you a partner that partnered with me. We saw that in Acts 10, 38. I'm leaving with you a partner, a comforter that may abide in you or with you, not once in a while, but forever. Hallelujah. So till Jesus come, the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to engage him in a partnership in your Christian journey, including the words that you speak. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody will take advantage of that partnership today in the name of Jesus. If that person is you, let me hear a resounding amen. Verse 17. It said there were some that will not be able to receive him because they do not see him. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit is a personality that may not be seen. But the evidence of his presence is always too palpable to ignore. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So you may not see him visibly or physically, but he is a personality whose indwelling in you can produce results that everybody can be able to see, including the results that come from the kind of words that you speak. Somebody will take advantage of that partnership tonight. If that person is you, let me hear a resounding amen. He said they do not know him he said for he dwelleth in you my point of emphasis is that he is inside of you he is not somebody that you are waiting to have come that the day you accepted the lordship of jesus he had already left you with the partnership of this personality called the holy spirit so he dwelleth in you say to yourself i carry the spirit of god inside of me if you understand this, my brothers and sisters, you will not be afraid to talk because you know that every time you speak, there is a force and a power inside of you that can produce results out of the words that you speak. That was why in that Luke five seventeen that I quoted, Jesus was just teaching. And whilst he was teaching, the power of God was descending via his words. As I am speaking right now, I decree and I declare, somebody will receive and encounter the power of God in the name of Jesus. That in any area of your life, that you need the power of God to do something, either in your health, in your career, in your business, even as you hear me speak, I I decree and I declare power shall be dispensed to address that issue in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, let me hear a resounding amen. In Acts chapter number 2 and verse 2, they were gathered in the day of Pentecost and the Bible recorded that the Holy Spirit descended upon them in verse 4. After the Holy Spirit descended upon them, the same Peter that doubted and denied Jesus three times, something came upon him that he preached a sermon. And the people had to meet him. They said, Peter, what you spoke carried so much power that we want to submit to the power that your word carries. He said, what shall we do in verse 37? He said, repent and give your lives to Christ. Hallelujah. The same timid Peter became an emboldened Peter that he spoke a word, preached a sermon, and 3,000 men were won to Jesus. From today, as you go for evangelism, your words will carry power that will convict sinners. That as you see somebody and tell the person, Jesus is Lord, have you surrendered to him? The person will melt and say, I want to know this, your Jesus. If you understand this, evangelism will become a very simple thing for you. Don't say, I am shy, I am timid. No, every word you are speaking is not your word. It is a word that is coming with a partnership from the Holy Spirit. Is God speaking to somebody tonight? So Peter the timid, by a partnership with the Holy Spirit, preached a sermon and 3,000 men were saved. Somebody will take advantage of that partnership tonight. If that person is you, can your amen be a resounding one? 
John 6 63 the Bible says the word that I speak to you they are not just mere words they are the spirit and every time you see the spirit in capital letter it is talking about the Holy Spirit and I said he is an embodiment of the power of God that any believer that has the consciousness that he or she carries the Spirit of God is a believer that carries the power of God and you cannot carry that power inside of you and your word Words will not produce results hallelujah so when you are saying i am blessed it is not just a word it is a word that is coming with a partnership with the holy spirit when you are saying i am healed it is not just a word it is a word that is coming out of you with an enforcer called the holy spirit when you say doors are opening for me it is not just a word there is a force partnering with your word that will ensure doors are open for you that when you understand this reality every time you speak you know that there is a backup of the power side of god which is the holy spirit hallelujah so john 6 63 the bible says the words that i speak unto you they carry power and they have the capacity to produce life i don't know what is dying or has died in anybody's life i decree and i declare that by the power of the word it is coming back alive in the name of jesus christ dead businesses are coming back alive dead organs in the body are coming back alive dead marriages and relationships are coming back alive dead careers are coming back alive anything that has died is dying in your life and in your destiny by the power of the spoken words i decree it is coming back alive in the name of jesus christ if you believe it shout a resounding amen so jesus's word carried power because the holy spirit partnered with him every time he spoke psalm chapter 107 and verse 20 the bible said he said his word he did not need to go there physically that as the word was being spoken a personality called the holy spirit carried the word with power and went forth and enforced the reality of that word Psalm 107 and verse 20, he said he sent his word and the word had the capacity to heal them and to deliver them of all their oppressions. Matthew chapter number 8, a centurion man met with Jesus and he demonstrated so much faith. He said, Master, I am a man under authority. I said to one, go, and he goes. I said to another, come, and he comes. I do not need you to come to my house. Master, only speak a word. Somebody say, only speak a word. Hallelujah. That issue confronting your life, you know, yesterday we talked about one of the ways to engage the word by faith you can speak words by faith and understand that there is a partner partnering with you as you speak called the holy spirit that your faith and your partnership with the holy spirit can make your words to produce results hallelujah hallelujah that is why every of the means of engaging the power of the word that i mentioned are very important being genuinely born again is important Adding faith as you speak is important. Speaking God's word is important. And engaging in a partnership with the Holy Spirit as you speak is equally important. Hallelujah. Those are the factors that makes your word to produce results. So the man said to Jesus, speak. You don't need to come and my servant shall be healed and jesus laughed why did he laugh it was not from a place of mockery that this man understands so much that there is a jurisdiction that the holy spirit that is in partnership with him has that can enforce the reality of the word that he speaks so jesus spoke the word and if you read verse 13 of that matthew chapter 8 the bible said in that same hour the servant of that man was made whole i don't care what is not working in your life i come today as one sent of the most high 
in partnership with the grace that is upon this altar and in partnership with the holy spirit that it will begin to work for you in the name of jesus christ that in this quarter what you could not encounter and experience in the first and second quarter i decree and i declare that in this third quarter you will encounter and experience it in the name of jesus christ if you believe it let me hear a resounding amen there's somebody under the influence of my voice what could not happen between january and june between now and august god will combine it and release it upon your life in the name of jesus christ if the person i'm talking about is you let me hear a resounding amen so you can engage the world with a partnership with the holy spirit hallelujah second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 the bible says it is the spirit that giveth life to the world the letter kill it hallelujah hallelujah so the holy spirit and his power is what gives credence and to the potency of every word that you speak so every time you are speaking know that you are not speaking alone there is a personality inside of you that will ensure that the world produces result so when you are declaring that i am wealthy even when there is no money in your bank account just keep declaring it boldly because there is a personality called the holy spirit that has the power to call forth wealth into your life by that declaration when you are saying i am healed of this sickness say it very boldly because there is a personality that carries power inside of you called the holy spirit that can make that word produce in your life hallelujah hallelujah your words will carry power from today if you believe it let me hear a resounding amen one day god showed me a picture of a very large crowd that i'll be speaking to and then i began to ask him i said lord supposing i'm supposed to lay hand on every of these people you are showing me how long will it take me to do that he said my son calm down there is a partnership you can come into with the holy spirit that even as you are speaking no matter the location of the person in the crowd i can reach out to the person with the words that you speak even in this service tonight is going to happen to somebody if the person is you let me hear a resounding amen one of the reasons why you can see our father stand on the crusade ground and he is speaking and things are happening without him entering into the crowd is because there is a personality that carries the power to enforce everything that he says i'm asking to somebody tonight somebody will encounter that power so the moment god gave me that insight I relax there is a place of laying hands and there is a place of just speaking with a consciousness that is the personality that backs up the word i speak that makes me go to rest that it is not for you to confirm the word it is for you to speak with the partnership of the holy spirit and allow him to do the work why he carries power remember the holy spirit was the one that brought jesus back to life the bible said in the book of romans 8 11 it said if the spirit that raised up christ from the dead that as jesus died and was buried this power went to the grave with the heavy stones that was used to cover the grave. He shifted it and brought him back to life. That is why your words carry the capacity to bring life to anything that has died. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul said something very interesting. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. He said, my words and my preaching were not of enticing words of man's wisdom. He said it was of the demonstration of the spirit and the power of God. That every time you speak words with the consciousness of the partnership of the Holy Spirit, your words will always produce results that are powerful. Somebody's word will produce such kinds of results from today. If that person is you, let me hear a resounding amen. 
So when I pray for people, when I speak to people, I don't speak with them, to them from a platform of my own power. I speak to them with an understanding that there is a partner that I have called the Holy Spirit that every time I speak, he must bring to pass what has been spoken. I engage that partnership tonight and I declare and I declare in somebody's life under the influence of my voice, your hands in this quarter will handle good things. Only those that believe me are shouting a loud amen. In this third quarter, I decree and I declare your hands will handle good things. Your eyes will see good things. Your legs will carry you to good places. Anyone that has forgotten you, I decree and I declare by the power of the word in partnership with the Holy Spirit, your name begins to echo in their ears right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember when we wanted to get a keyboard we are a young ministry that is just coming up i said lord we have clapped our hands enough we need a keyboard the holy spirit picked the word and as he picked the word he traveled as far as abuja and had to make a man to dream the man according to his story he said he dreamt in one night three times that he was giving me money hallelujah and by the time he woke up, he lost his peace. Why? Because a man somewhere spoke and said, Father, we need a keyboard. Hallelujah. In the afternoon of that day, the man called me. He said, sir, I have lost my peace today. I said, what happened? He said, I had a dream that I was giving you 200,000 three times in one night. After he said it, I did not say we needed a keyboard because I didn't want to put him under pressure. I just kept quiet. By the following day, he transferred the money into my account. When he transferred it, I now told him, I said, this was the reason why God made you do that. We needed a keyboard. He said, please, go and ask for a higher version of what you wanted to buy and let me know. I went and asked the higher version of that one as at that time cost an extra 100000 He wired it because somebody spoke and said, Lord, we need a keyboard. I decree and I declare, as from today, as you speak in partnership with the Holy Spirit, it will produce maximally for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you are saying, Lord, let there be abundance of food in my house what you are simply saying is holy spirit go forth and make abundance become my reality in my home hallelujah is anybody blessed already so every time you see the word producing results when our father speak there is a partner that picks the word that as he stands from a location, things begin to happen everywhere. Every time you see any man genuinely of God speaks and people return with testimony, it was because as the person spoke, there was a backup of a personality called the Holy Spirit that enforced the reality of that word. So it is not just for men of God. Remember I showed you that the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of you. That even where you are seated right now, he is there. Not somewhere beside you, but inside of you. And when you have that consciousness, your words will be accompanied with power. In the name of Jesus, as you speak from today, power will exude from your word to produce results in the name of Jesus. So when you are saying, I cannot be killed, I cannot have accident, you say it boldly, and the Holy Spirit inside of you will ensure that any time an arrow is coming, he stands with his might and with his power and ensure that the words that you have spoken produces result. We are in a season where the world says there is scarcity. Stop speaking scarcity, my brothers and sisters. Speak abundance because there is a power in the world that you carry which will be able to produce abundance in your life. I taught my family and children, when anything is finished, we don't say it is finished. They come and tell me, they say, Daddy, this thing is plenty. I understand what it means. So as they are saying it is plenty, that word makes the thing never to finish because supply will always come. Stop confessing negative. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Your life will produce maximum results. 
in this quarter such that you have never seen since this year began as you begin to speak and declare your life will produce results in the name of jesus please rise up on your feet everybody i'm going to be rounding up with another dimension of how to engage the world shali kaparato sele kaparanta kaba eko parita suka parika tua shadia Lebeka tu salia barado shataka badia. Rekoto sheke pelebo sadia. Akaparato sa. If you can pray in the language of the spirit, just begin to blast in the language of the spirit. Jeko paria kaparato seke pele brege dua sadia. Akapara shadia kalu sekeria. Repe kato sedia. Rapa kato sheke pele brege dia. Rata kaparato sedia. Reko paria gado sadia gada. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the things we are going to do in the next few minutes is an activation of the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. <laughs> that as you begin to pray in the Spirit, you will stir up the waters of the Spirit inside of you. And after that, we will begin to declare that as you begin to declare, your words are no longer coming ordinary. It is there are, there are words that are coming with the backup of the Spirit. Can you lift up your voice? Begin to pray in the Spirit. Shake a thank you jesus while i was praying and preparing for this meeting the spirit of god made me to understand that there will be an awakening in the life of somebody of the reality of his indwelling in that person <laughs> The next one minute, still pray, still pray in the language of the spirit. Shaka parato seke belebos, rapa kato seke belebos, shada parata. Reto lekwa swata ike pepereto, patuta nikwa swarato shaka pa, matos kapora kai kapora to shaka pa. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, I told you every time you speak, you speak with the backup of the spirit. I'm going to speak with that back up right now over the life of somebody. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Spirit of God, before your people came, you knew they would come. Oh, yes. Kaparato sheke pelebro sataka bari alada. Anything that must happen for their lives to produce testimonies in this quarter, I decree and I declare, let it be activated from now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Every dormancy of the Spirit of God in anybody's life, I decree and I declare that by this meeting tonight, Amen. let there be a reactivation in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you go forth and speak words from today, I decree and I declare that by Shataka Baratwasada, a partnership of the Holy Spirit, your words will produce results in the name of Jesus. If you came here sick tonight, I decree and I declare 
that satanic affliction of sickness <laughs> leaves your body right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, any torment of darkness Shaka. in anybody's life, I decree and I declare from this moment it be permanently terminated in the name of Jesus. Uh, I command the devil and his activities to be terminated in your life and in your destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's a lady I saw in the spirit while I was preparing. He said, I'm reactivating. I'm reactivating. Lift up your hands. I don't know who that person is, but I told you how the words carry power. I may not know her physically, but he's going to reach out to the person. Kaparato sekepelebo shadiagada. Holy Spirit, whoever the person is, Arato kabariyalada. And what he's about to do in the life of that person is not just for the person, but for the generation and the lineage. Right now, Spirit of God, ayapa kato shadiagada. Wherever you are, in case the person is beside you, you bring the person forward so that our daddy enforces that which the Holy Spirit wants to do in that destiny. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Holy Ghost. From the front to the back, whoever that person is, help me bring the person. Bring the person forward. There is something God said he will do. Jesus. For your name is Holy. Bring that forward. Your name is Oh. I got a bad about shake a penny about Shadia Shaka Parato shake a penny about shake a penny about the world. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You showed her and you spoke about her. Let there be an activation. Parato shake a penny about Shadia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It is a generation. It is a, that's what he told me. He said, I am terminating a generational siege and I am activating something new. In the name of Jesus, lift up your two hands, everybody. There is a dimension of spoken words that is a prophetic dimension that a man called of God can speak and things become a reality yeah, oh yes. that because there is a power back up to that word I stand by the prophetic the apostolic grace of God upon my life the prophetic and apostolic grace of God upon the life of our father that in this quarter you will see good results in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare oh Shaka Parato Sadia I'm just seeing in the spirit that a closed door a closed door a closed door has been opened up for somebody I decree and I declare everything that has kept you on the same spot by the power of the prophetic word let it be open right now in the name of Jesus Amen Thank you, Jesus. When Jesus came to that woman, he said, Ephata. Ayabarapo sheke pelebo sadiagada. Ephata. 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 To every close thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and I declare your testimonies will be alarming to the ones that hear it <laughs> there are testimonies that you share and there are testimonies that share themselves in this quarter god is giving you testimonies that you will not need to share your <laughs> testimonies will share themselves in the name of Jesus. <laughs> thank you father thank you jesus somebody's story has just changed amen I said somebody's story has just changed. Amen. The story of your business has just changed. Amen. The story of your 
career has just changed. Amen. The story of your marriage has just changed. Amen. And I decree and I declare it is a positive change in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? You will not need to tell anybody you attended this seven days program. Your testimonies will be the announcement mm -hmm. that you attended a program that your life dramatically changed in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Somebody believe it, shout a resounding name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you speak prophetically? Say, my story has changed. My story Say, has my changed. Story has changed. Say my story has changed. My story has changed. Thank you, Jesus. My story has changed. Father, we thank you. Lord, I lay hands on you. Your story has changed in the name of Jesus. Stand up. What an awesome time. What an awesome time. Keep clapping out your house with a stop. Keep clapping out your house with a stop. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate all.